Hey guys, this is NC Productions with another GTA 5 modding tutorial. This time I'm going to show you the process of porting a custom pet from Blender to GTA 5 with the help of Solemn's Blender plugin. Now before I begin, I want to clarify that this is not a tutorial for beginners. This video targets an audience already familiar with the concept of 3D modding. If you're a novice and still want to dip your toes into this, an understanding of mesh, UV and rig editing, as well as weight painting, vertex painting, and texture baking is required. Several YouTube tutorials already address these topics, so I won't be going into much detail with them. For this tutorial, you'll need the following tools. Blender with the Solomons plugin, Codewalker, and a YMT editor to modify PED metadata. Download links for all three are in the description below. You'll also need an image editing software like Photoshop or similar. Lastly, a trainer for GTA 5, which is used to load add-on PEDs into the game. For this video, I'll be using the menu trainer. At the time of this video, I'm using Blender version 2.93 with Solemns version 1.3. I only mention this in case you download a newer version of Blender or Solemns and the setup or layout in this video doesn't match yours. With all that out the way, let's begin the process of porting a custom pet to GTA 5. Download Solemns from the official GitHub page as a zip file. Next, open Blender and navigate to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and click the Install button. Select the zip file you downloaded and Import Export Solemn should show up. Make sure it's checked, click the burger menu icon, and hit Save Preferences. This will ensure the Solemns plugin is active every time you launch Blender. Here's the subject matter I'll be using for this walkthrough, an original character named Leia. I'll be turning her into a protagonist pet, meaning she will be fully compatible in-game and in cutscenes. To further understand the differences between in-game and cutscene pads, you can watch my Convert Add-on Cutscene Pad to a Protagonist Pad video. Link in the description. The first step in the process is to import a rig from the game. For this tutorial, I'll use IG Natalia YFT as my base. I'll open Codewalker RPF Explorer and search for IG Natalia. Next, right click IG Natalia YFT, select Export XML, choose a desired location, and IG Natalia YFT XML will now exist. This is the file that will be imported with the Solemns plugin. Select File, Import, Codewalker XML, select the file, and the rig should import successfully. I recommend checking in front under Viewport Display for the rig. This makes the rig transparent and viewable through the mesh. Now I'll align my mesh to the root of the rig. Root of the rig means the pelvic area. With that done, I'll select the rig and enter Edit Mode, because I'm going to manually adjust each individual bone to fit my custom ped. If this is your first time doing this, what you can do is import IG Natalia YDD and analyze where each bone is located on the mesh. Be advised, readjusting the proportions of the rig for your pet will result in the pet's hand positioning not being properly attached to a weapon, steering wheel, handlebars, etc., but will provide the best and most versatile application for your pet. If you want to retain correct hand positioning, keep the proportions of the bone and adjust your mesh to the rig instead. I'm going to fast forward this part of the video a little bit to save you some time. You can use YouTube's playback options to adjust the speed if the fast forwarding goes too quickly. In the meantime, enjoy some YouTube stock music to break the silence. Under viewport display, I toggle on axis, which will display the X, Y, and Z axis of each bone. This will be helpful when rotating each bone to better align with the mesh. Here, I'm doing a so-called bone roll in order to adjust the x-axis of a bone. To do so, select a bone, press Ctrl R, and adjust the bone manually by moving your mouse, then left-click to apply. After some time, I've manually positioned all the bones to the mesh, except for the facial bones. The goal here is to make my pet a protagonist pet, but the facial bones from an IG skeleton are not compatible. So for now, I will simply delete them. However, make sure bones like skeleton head and IK head aren't deleted. These are located in the same area as facial facial root, which you do want to delete. Here, I pick a bone and view the name of it in the top left. 
press H to hide bones like skull head and IK head while deleting facial facial root. To reveal the bones you've hidden, press Alt H to make them reappear. For now, don't worry about the missing facial bone. I'll start with a simple head bone just for testing purposes and add the proper facial bones later in the video. With the bones in place, it's time to weight paint my mesh to move the rig. To make this easier for me, I will join all the separate mesh pieces into one main mesh. Now let's add some vertex groups to my pad. Initially, I tried using Armature Deform with automatic weights. Unfortunately, my mesh is too complicated for Blender to automatically assign vertex groups. If it's successfully applied to your pad, you just save yourself a lot of time. However, because it didn't work for me, I'm going to have to import IG Natalia YDD to Blender and adjust the proportions of the imported pad to fit my custom pad. The reason for this is to transfer weights from IG Natalia to my custom pad. It's not perfect, but gives me something to work with. Now comes the tedious part. I'm going to manually adjust each individual vertex group so my mesh deforms properly with the rig. If your pad contains any vertex groups with PH and IK prefixes, you should delete them, as they're not really meant to be weighted to the mesh. The following portion of the video will now mostly feature me manually adjusting weights for all the vertex groups, so I'm going to fast forward this part as well to save you some time.
When I'm done weight painting, I'll limit my weights to four per vertex. To do that, under weight paint mode, click weights and hit the limit total button. It's important you limit your weights to four per vertex. If you don't, you will have weight errors on your pad. After some time, all the weights are finally in place and the next step is vertex painting. GTA 5 uses two types of vertex colors. First slot is color and the second slot is illumination. Color is how your mesh is affected by lighting and illumination is what area of your mesh is affected by wind. For my pads, I always set the color vertex to orange, hexadecimal code hash FF800. And for illumination vertex, I always start by filling my pad with a solid black. Anything color black won't be affected by wind. The area of my mesh I do want to interact with wind, I will color white. The wider the area, the more will be affected by wind. With the vertex color and illumination now set, I still need to adjust the vertex alpha for both color and illumination vertices. To view the vertex alpha for both channels, click the shading tab to access the material nodes. Press Shift A, click search, and enter vertex color. Now connect alpha with base color and vertex alpha will be present in the viewport. If you have color selected, your mesh will appear white, which is correct. However, when you switch to illumination, your mesh is also white, which is incorrect. You want illumination alpha to be black as well. The illumination alpha controls what area is affected by sweat. The whiter the area you paint, the darker the area will become when indicating sweat. As an example, I'll paint a small area on the upper part of the torso, which will then darken through standing in the sun for an extended period of time or exercising. With vertex painting out the way, it's time to split my mesh into individual components supported by the game. For pedestrians, the game supports up to 12 components. It's not strictly necessary to follow these rules, but doing so allows for versatility, i.e. custom blouses, pants, etc. Here's a list of the components. First is the head. This one's kind of self-explanatory. The head mesh is present within this component. Some in-game Rockstar pads also have the hands included, but for my pad, I will only include the head. Beard component. This component is usually for beards or masks. My pad uses neither of the aforementioned, so I won't be using this slot. However, the custom pad you're working with may be different. Hair component. Also self-explanatory. The hairstyle of the component is stored here. Upper component. Upper torso, usually for blouses and tops. Lower component. For the lower body, like the pants or legs. Hand component. Hands, obviously. Feet component. For feet or shoes. Teeth component. This component contains the teeth, eyeballs, and tongue. Some Rockstar pads also use this component for small accessories like ties, scarves, necklaces, etc. But I'll use the component for its intended purpose. ACCS component. Used for accessories. Task component. Used for bulletproof vests, backpacks, or similar. DECL component. Used for decals like tattoos or clothing texture overlays. JBIB component. Used for additional layers of clothing or accessories, like a vest, jacket, jewelry, etc. As you can see, I've decided to split my pet into the following components. The head and eyelash in the head component, the hairstyle in the hair component, the eyeballs, tongue, and teeth in the teeth component, the dress and neck in the upper component, the legs and panties in the lower component, the feet and heels in the feet component, the hand with rings in the hand component, and lastly, the earrings in the JBIB component. Next, it's time to set up the textures for my pad to match GTA 5's settings. But before doing that, we need to make sure you understand how GTA 5 handles shaders and textures. A mesh can include as many shaders as needed, but all of the shaders have to use the same diffuse, normal, and specular texture, as the game does not support individual textures for each shader like my mesh does. For instance, if we take the teeth component, the eyeballs, tongue, and teeth each use their own texture. However, GTA 5 does not support this, so I'll have to bake the three textures into one single texture. In order to do that, I need to set up the UV map so it can be baked, which leads me into explaining how to set up the UV maps for GTA 5. The game will only use the first two UV maps. The first UV map is for your diffuse, normal, and specular map texture, and the second UV map is for overlay decals like blood and dirt. For my character, I have a third UV map, but this isn't necessary for your pad, as I will only be using the third UV map to store the original UV layout. This is in order to bake my new diffuse texture on my custom UV map layout. In short, the first UV map is the result I will bake my new textures on, second is damage overlay decals, and third contains the original UV map of the mesh. When I've set up my new custom UV layout, I'm ready to bake my new diffuse texture on it. And there we have it! Eyes, teeth, and tongue are now combined into one texture. Repeat this process for all of the components containing multiple textures. 
In the end, all my components share a single diffuse texture. As for normal and specular maps, I will create these manually in Photoshop later. Now I'll create a new UV layout for the second UV map. Select the second UV map, highlight the mesh, press U to make the UV mapping window pop up, and select Project from View. Before clicking it, make sure you're viewing your pad from a center frontal view. By pressing 5, then 1 on your numpad, you will have a perfectly straight front angle. The reason for unwrapping the second UV map in this manner is to avoid the damage decals misaligning on the seam of the mesh. I repeated the same process for all my components. After splitting my mesh into components, I have a body split between the neck and head. Because of the separation, there is now a visible seam around the neck due to mismatch between vertex normals. To fix this, enter edit mode, click show overlays, navigate to the normal section, and click display split normals. It's the middle button of the three. I also adjusted the size to the minimum in order to shorten the purple line and make it easier to work with. Now I'm going to select the body parts that have been separated, i.e. the neck and head. By pressing Shift N in edit mode, a normals pop-up window appears. Here we see copy vectors and paste vectors, which I'll be using to fix the vertex normals. To make the process faster and more convenient, I'll assign hotkeys for them. Right click on one and select assign shortcut. My shortcuts are Alt X for copy vectors and Alt C for paste vectors. On to the vertex normals. For my pad, I select both the head and body mesh and enter edit mode. The two purple lines visible around the neck indicate misaligned vertex normals between the head and neck. Using the shortcuts I just created, I'll copy one of the vertex normals and paste it over the other. You can see me copy the vertex normal from the edge of the head mesh and paste the vertex normal data over the edge of the neck mesh. This should result in a single purple line, which means both vertices have their vertex normals aligned properly, thus removing the visible seam. Repeat the process around the neck until the seam only consists of single purple lines. Now it's time to set up my pet and solemns for export. In object mode, press the N key to open the Blender side panel window and click Solemns Tools tab. Next, go to Drawable Tools, Create Drawable Objects, and under Type, pick Drawable Dictionary, then click Create Drawable. Name it whatever you want, but be advised, the name of the Drawable Dictionary will be the name of your file after export. I'll name mine NC Leia. Next, I'll select a mesh from my pad, select Drawable under Type, and click Create Drawable. The plugin will then create a drawable node with a drawable model nested to it. The selected mesh will be turned into a drawable geometry that is nested to the drawable model. I'm going to delete the drawable solemns created because I'll be using my own rig, then duplicate it and name it after component. I'll start with the head and name my duplicated rig head 0 u The 0 is a counter. GTA 5 can support multiple components under the same category accessed through the game's wardrobe feature. If I had an additional head component, my drawable would be called head 0 u Pay attention to the suffix u as it means universal. These suffixes play a role in naming the diffuse texture for your drawables. You can also end your suffix with head 0 R. The R stands for race and is related to the human race, like white, black, etc. This can be useful if your pet consists of multiple races. However, my pet is single race, and in order to simplify things, I'll name the suffixes for my drawables and diffuse textures after the universal preset. I parent the rig to the drawable dictionary and make sure the drawable model containing the mesh is also nested to the drawable. I will also rename my drawable model and drawable geometry to get a better overview of my project. You can rename these to whatever you want. I parent the rig to the drawable dictionary and make sure the drawable model containing the mesh is also nested to the drawable. To see what solemns type each object is, you can open the object properties tab and expand the solemns section. Here you can see the solemns type specifying what type it is. Under drawable model, it is very important to enter 251 to unknown 1 parameter and 1 to flags parameter. These values are important when working with PEDs, as if these values are left unchanged, the PED will be stuck in a T-pose. In the same area, you can also specify the level of detail for your mesh, which I will be doing later. For now, I will only create high LODs for my components. Repeat the process until all the mesh pieces are registered as drawable geometry nested to a drawable model and all your drawable models are nested to a drawable rig. By the way, at the time of the recording, the feet component didn't exist yet as they were a part of the lower component. This is a choice I will be regretting later in this video. 
Next is creating shaders. Solemn shaders contain extra bits of data related to GTA 5 shaders. Without these, the pet cannot be exported. As a brief reminder, a drawable geometry can include multiple shaders but only one texture, meaning all shaders must link to the same texture. Under the Create Shader tab, you'll see a small area where you can select the shader you want assigned to your mesh. When working with PEDs, open the search filter and search for PED. The following results are shaders relevant to pedestrians. The most common shaders are the following. PED, these are used on areas of the mesh that do not include any transparency. PED Default, same as PED Shader, but won't be rendered as detailed. This shader is primarily used for medium and low LOD objects. PED Alpha, these can be assigned to areas with transparency that will be rendered in an alpha blend manner. I mostly use these for small areas like eyelashes or lenses for sunglasses. Pet Hair Spiked. This shader is only assigned to hairstyles. Many more shaders exist for pets. The aforementioned are the most common and will be the ones assigned to my pet. Once a solemn shader has been created, assign the whole mesh or parts of it. This will turn the mesh black. To assign my own texture to it, open the base color section followed by color 1. From here, my texture is located and loaded. Still under the Materials tab, scroll down until Solemn's tab appears. Expand it and there will be two subsections called Value Parameters and Texture Parameters. The Value Parameters contain data related to that shader. The parameters I always leave at zero are Detail Settings and Stubble Control. I'm not entirely sure what they are or how they work. If you know their purpose, please share your knowledge in the comments. Occasionally, I'll change the UM Global Params parameters. The first two values are defaulted to 0.002. These values represent the intensity of the wind effect. The last two values are defaulted to 7 and represent the amount of side-to-side -side movement caused by wind. You can change the values to increase or decrease the intensity or dynamics of the wind effect. The next section is Texture Parameters. This is where the values of the diffuse, normal map, and specular map textures are defined. My pad contains all drawables with a universal property, meaning my diffuse texture will end with a uni suffix in the texture name. For example, my pad contains all drawables with a universal property, meaning my diffuse texture will end with a uni suffix in the texture name. For example, head diff 000a uni. If my drawable had the r suffix, the suffix of my diffuse texture could include whi for white, bla for black, etc. Again, my pad does not contain multiple races, hence the reason why I enter the uni value. The value of the normal and specular map is the same regardless if the drawable contains a U or R suffix. For instance, my head mesh is nested to a head 000 U drawable, thus the normal map is named head normal 000 and the specular map is named head spec 000. You can define the value by manually entering it or uploading the designated texture for it. In my case, I only have the diffuse texture on hand, but have not yet created the normal or specular map. This is why I upload my diffuse texture, but manually type in the normal and specular map values in the video. If you want a better understanding of how PEDs are set up in Blender, you can import a Rockstar PED and analyze each object, shader, texture property, etc. Now it's time to export the pad. Select the drawable dictionary, in my case NC Leia, and go to File, Export, Codewalker XML. I'm exporting a pad, so I'll make sure drawables and drawable dictionaries are the only selected properties under Solemn's types. After export, Solemn's has created a new XML file called NC Leia YDD XML. Open Codewalker RPF Explorer and locate the add-on pads folder, Right-click, select Import XML, and select the YDD file. This will convert the XML file to YDD, which you can then open to preview the PED. With CodeWalker's preview tool, you have the ability to view the skeleton as well as assess the PED by running test animations. Right now, my PED is all white because the YDD file, the file containing all the textures for my PED, is missing. I then used Photoshop to generate a normal map based on the diffuse texture with a plugin called NVIDIA Texture Tools Exporter. You can also use a normal map generator from a third-party application. That's up to you. 
For the specular maps, I manually created them with the help of a template I've included in the description below. For skin, I personally prefer using dark skin color from the texture guide. However, you are free to do whatever you want for your specular maps. I make sure all textures are saved as DDS using BC2, also known as DXT2 or DXT3 texture compression with 4-bit transparency. I duplicated a random YDT file, deleted its contents, manually uploaded my textures to it, and saved it as NC Layer YDT. Close Code Walker and reopen it, then view the pad with the textures loaded in. Now I'm going to create a YMT file for my pad. I'll be making a video on how to add additional clothing variations with YMT editing sometime in the future. For now, let's just get the basics done. First, I enable components in the YMT that didn't exist before. I also disable components that exist in the YMT but not in my pad. Lastly, I remove the additional drawables on each component because for now, only one drawable exists per component in the pad. Alright, it's time to create a YFT file. In short, a YFT is the pad skeleton. Fortunately, the YDD file I recently exported contains a skeleton for each component, so I have to copy a skeleton from the YDD and replace it in the YFT file. I'll just duplicate a random YFT file from CodeWalker. Make sure it's a YFT file to take from another ped. Open your YDD file, search for skeleton, and copy the whole XML block. Next, in your YFT file, search for skeleton again, mark the whole skeleton block, and replace it by pasting in the data you copied from the YDD. Save your file and import the YFT with CodeWalker. That should do the trick. Lastly, I need to create an add-on slot for my ped in the APM XML file. For now, the expression set name tag is set to expression set MPF free mode 01, which is the female multiplayer expression dictionary file. This allows me to adjust the base height of my pad with YMT editing. Before adding a height value though, I need to test the pad in game with the default value. With the game booted up, let's load my custom pad with a trainer. As you can see, there are a few minor bugs. The toe bones are inverted, the feet are too close causing them to clip through each other when walking, and my pad is floating midair. So let's get to fixing these errors. First on the list will be the inverted toes. Fortunately, it's an easy fix. I just have to flip the toe bones and that's it. The next issue is the legs being too close, causing the feet to clip with each other. This is also an easy fix, as I only have to readjust the bone roll on the hip bones. I also readjusted the angle of the hip bones, as I wasn't satisfied with the legs being as bendy as they were. After the adjustments, the legs are straighter and the feet appropriately distanced from each other. Last is the floating issue. Even if I added a negative value to the legs component in the YMT file, the base height of my pad remained unchanged. Remember me mentioning I was going to regret having the feet part of the lower component? Here's when I realized that adjusting the base height only works for the feet components. Because of this, I had to split the feet from the legs and create them as an individual component, feet triple zero U. I readjusted the UV maps for both channels, baked my new diffuse texture on it, fixed the vertex normal between the legs and feet to avoid a visible seam, and re-enabled the feet component in the YMT file. In it, I set a negative value to adjust for base height in the feet component and created a new normal map as well as a specular map to the new feet component. As you can see, my pet is no longer floating. Since I'm in the game already, I might as well test the damage decals. With the menu trainer, I can toggle them on and see how they look. I also applied sweat, and it does indeed get darker on the area I painted. You can also see the front bangs of her hair wobble in the wind as I've applied white paint in the vertex illumination. I opted to also paint the collar and bottom of the dress. This isn't necessary, but I personally think it will improve the overall aesthetics when the dress is also swaying in the wind. After all that, she still lacks a bit of soul, as she isn't expressing any emotions at all. That's due to there not being any facial bones present. To add some life to the face, I will need to import a new rig. 
This time I will use a CS rig, like CS Natalia YFT, but any CS rig will do. Open a new Blender project and import your rig. Now I'm going to delete some of the facial bones that I won't be needing, as some of them are too minor to be noticed during gameplay or cutscenes. Shown on the screen now is a list of the facial bones I kept for this pad. Removing excess facial bones also simplifies the rig to give me a clearer view. With the excess facial bones removed, I copied the CS Natalia rig and pasted it on my project, then started removing bones associated with the body. I don't need these, as I already have them as my drawables. When deleting bones from the CS rig, make sure Skell head and IK head are included. It's important you make sure facial facial root is not deleted. I'll get to that in a moment, but before that, I'll adjust the facial bones to my custom pet. I highly recommend you import a head component of a CS pet to Blender and analyze what type of weight is painted to each bone, as the sheer amount of facial bones can be overwhelming. After spending some time positioning the new facial bones on my character, it's time to join the CS rig to one of my existing rigs. I'll join the CS skeleton with the head 000 U rig and go over why the facial facial root bone from CS skeleton is important. This is important, as you're going to parent it to the skell head, meaning the facial facial root bone from the CS skeleton is now parented to the skell head bone, originally from an IG skeleton. With the two rigs joined up, it's time to weight paint the face to the associated bones. This is also a tedious process, so I'm going to fast forward through this part until all facial bones have their areas weighted to them. During this process, I use the head component of CS Natalia as a template showing me where each weight was painted.
Once complete, it's time to export the pad. But before doing so, I make sure all remaining drawables in my components have been replaced with the new rig containing the new facial bones. After export, replace the skeleton tag in the YFT file with the new skeleton from the new YDD. The final changes will be in the APM XML. My pad now has facial bones, so they need to be activated by changing three values for the pad. I change expression set name from expression set MPF free mode 01 to null, then expression dictionary name from null to NC Leia. Same goes for expression name, by the way. Lastly, I changed facial clips at group name from facial clips at group gen male to facial clips at group PM0. In order to gain a better understanding of dictionary expressions, I suggest you watch GTA 5 Convert Add-on Cutscene Pad to a Protagonist Pad, Parts 1 and 2. The links to those videos are included in the description below. As an act of kindness, I'll include the custom expression dictionary file I modified as a downloadable in the description for you to use on your own custom pad. With the expression dictionary in the clear, let's fire up the game and see the facial expressions. As you can see, they're looking great. What about speech? Look out! Don't get weird, honey. I can't be with you all the time. Bye! They're looking great. Cutscenes? Man, fuck you. I'll see you at work. Oh, nigga, don't hate me because I'm beautiful, nigga. Maybe you got rid of that old yee-yee-ass haircut you got, you get some bitches on your dick. Oh, better yet, maybe Tanisha will call your dog ass if she ever stop fucking with that brain surgeon the lawyer she fucking with, nigga. What? Yep, I'll take that as a win. But wait, we're not quite finished. Currently, my pet only contains a high level of detail, meaning once I zoom out, my character becomes a little blocky from a distance. This is due to missing medium and low LODs. The issue is more noticeable in a scenario when your pet is an NPC, so that's the final task for this project, creating the medium and low LODs. In Blender, open Solid's tool tab and expand General Tools. From here, you have the option to hide high, medium, low, and very low LODs, as well as hiding the skeleton if needed. Creating LODs in Solid's is very easy. First, duplicate the drawable model and drawable geometry for head, upper and lower components. I decided to create LODs for these components, as the excluded components will be too small to be seen from a distance. I renamed the duplicates to the proper name, as well as assigning the correct LOD level on the drawable model settings. As for drawable geometry, I used the decimate modification to lower the poly count on the mesh and apply the modification. As soon as all LODs have been created for the corresponding components, it's time to export it again. When exporting, make sure all hide LODs checkboxes are left unchecked. Otherwise, you'll receive a list index out of range error message upon export. And that's it. Simple as that. Testing the LODs in game seems to be working. I no longer see a noticeable blocky character from a distance. Looks like my pet is finished. Or is it? Right now, my pet doesn't have any outfit alternatives like my other pets do, nor does it have any accessories or hats. I also want to add the feature of shrinking the hair when wearing a motorcycle helmet, for instance. I'll get to that in a future video. For now, I hope this video provided you with the basic insights of ped modding and gives you a good starting ground. I want to thank the Solemns team for their hard work on making GTA 5 modding and Blender possible. Without their work, this video wouldn't be possible. You can follow the official Solemns Discord servers for updates, help, or keep an eye out for what people got cooking with Solemns. When joining, please do yourself a favor and read the server rules. Thank you. Also thanks to Gzybek for the YMT tool. Without it, you would have to manually edit the YMT, which would be a pain in the butt. Anyway, thanks for watching my walkthrough. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.